Hello everyone. Today we're doing a get ready with me slash updated makeup routine slash girl talk video slash life updates. <laughs> I'm about to get ready for class. I said this in my last get ready with me and I really liked reading the comments. So tell me what you guys are doing while you watch this video. Are you treating it like a podcast and maybe cleaning your room? Are you just hanging out? Are you eating? I always watch YouTube while I eat. I love to do that. I also usually watch YouTube while I'm getting ready. So maybe that's literally what you guys are doing right now. I started off with the e.l.f. matte putty primer and I kind of just put it in my t-zone and now I go in with the Fenty Beauty Ease Droplet. It says it's an all over glow enhancer. So I like putting it on my cheekbones because that's where I like to be more glowy. So first of all, before we get into the girl talk questions that I asked you guys to ask me on my Instagram story, I want to go through some life updates. Mostly one life update. Also, I am using the Rare Beauty, I think it's called Positive Light Under Eye Brightener or something like that. Anyways, I've been waiting to fully talk about this for a while and I kind of still can't, but what I will tell you is that I am moving. I won't say where yet, but it is out of LA and it is near the beach, which just makes me so happy to think about. I am so so excited. I'm gonna be moving this summer. I'm also gonna be living on my own, which I am very excited for because that's just something I've never gotten to experience. It's also going to make my job a whole lot easier because filming videos is the easiest for me when I am just like by myself and I obviously can't control when I'm gonna be by myself. Also, I'm using the Fit Me Foundation by Maybelline. I've stuck with this one so long because first of all, I do just really like it, but also I think it's such a good shade for me. It's just a very good match. Also, this brush that I'm using I use for like everything and it's so good. It is by elf. I don't know exactly what the name of it is Oh, it's the complexion duo brush But yeah, so I have gotten over being kind of afraid to film in front of like my roommate Not even in front of her just like while she's here and stuff because when I'm filming I have to talk loud I sometimes have to like repeat myself a bunch of times because I like stuttered or something So I sound kind of silly when I'm filming and I just like never was super comfortable doing it around anyone Also, I'm currently using the Boing concealer by benefit I really like this one, but I'm running out. But like I was saying, I fully am able to like film in front of people. But the thing is, no matter how hard I try, the video just does not turn out as good as it would if I were alone. Because like, I don't know, when I'm in front of people, I'm trying to like say my sentences perfectly. It's just so awkward talking to a camera when there's people around and you don't realize how like difficult it is until you try it. And you're like, ooh, this does not feel natural at all. Oh no, my light died. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna continue this video without the light. Honestly, the lighting in my room right now is pretty good so this is fine. I'm using the Fenty Beauty matchsticks in mocha. On my cheekbones specifically I like to put it on the brush and then put it on my face because I feel like it's easier to blend out that way but then I will just throw it right on my forehead and then I like to put it on my eyelids too. But anyways now that you guys know I am moving. I am so excited. The apartment is so cute. Very homey, very cozy, kind of beachy. I was gonna ask you guys for your opinion. Also I'm using the Rare Beauty Melting Blush in Nearly Mauve. This is my favorite blush right now. I feel like I've talked about it a million times now on this channel but I was gonna ask how would you guys prefer the moving content to be would you prefer it kind of like it was the last time I moved where it was more just like casual vlogs of just like what I was doing that day in terms of moving or do you want more structured videos that are kind of divided up by room so I would do like organizing my bedroom organizing my kitchen putting together my living room stuff like that also right now I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty light one highlighter in the shade pillow top I put it on the inner corners of my eyes and and then my cheekbones. So let me know if you want more structured videos or more casual vlogs or maybe even a mix of both. I really just want to do it right this time because I feel like you guys didn't see a lot of the moving process the last time because of my living situation maybe. I was going from a dorm to an apartment rather than an apartment to an apartment. But basically I will be able to film very easily in my new place because it's just going to be me. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. I will explain more about the moving situation and why I'm moving and stuff in a future video because I still don't even know what's going on. It has been a hectic process to say the least. So we'll see what happens, but let's move on to the questions. Also, I'm just using a powder puff to set my face in all the areas except like my cheeks. And I'm just using the Wet n Wild translucent powder. And then I like to set my blush with a powder blush. And right now I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette. And so I kind of just mix the shades depending on what I want and then just throw it on. I love blush. A question I got a lot of is how to romanticize your life. I feel like the biggest way for me recently is to just get out of the house. Just going out and doing things. If you don't have a car, maybe going on a walk. Like last week, I was not having the best time mentally. And so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna go out and go walk around the Americana and kind of like go shopping. But it really just like wasn't about the shopping for me. Also, 
so I'm gonna do my eyeliner now. This is the L'Oreal Paris Infallible Grip Eyeliner. It was more about literally just like being outside, being around people, being in an environment that makes me happy. I swear, if you've ever been to the Americana, you know it is like the adult version of Disneyland. <laughs> they play cute music, there's cute lights, there's like a water fountain. It's just a very pretty walkable area. And I had such a good day whenever I did that. Also just getting outside and like spending time with friends. Last night, my friend and I kind of last minute went to get dessert and it was so much fun. All we did was just like go to a crumble and got cookies and then we drove to like a lookout point and just sat in the car and talked for like hours and it was so fun. So it doesn't even have to be anything crazy, but just spending time with people that you love makes life better. Also, I just used the NYX brow glue, but I think another way to romanticize your life is just to practice gratitude very often because it truly just like makes you so aware and focused on the things that are good in life. Like say you're on a walk, you can be thinking to yourself like I'm so grateful that the weather is good enough today to where I can go on a walk or I'm so grateful that my body is doing this for me that I'm able to go on a walk. Also this eyelash curler is from Tarte and this is the YSL mascara or say like on the walk you're listening to music in your headphones. You can be like wow I'm so grateful for this music right now to make this walk more fun. Speaking of music and getting out of the house, a great way to romanticize your life is concerts because they're truly just such a cool experience and just like surreal because sometimes it's so hard to believe that like the artist is just standing right there in front of you. Live music just makes me so so happy. I've specifically been wanting to see SZA and even Taylor Swift. I wouldn't even like consider myself a Swifty but everything I've seen of the Eras tour looks amazing so I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video which is SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek and that includes concerts, sports, festivals, and more. I'm already getting so excited about some of these on here. There are so many people that I want to see. Hozier, Joji, Sam Smith, Lizzo, Don Tolliver, so many good artists. With artists like Taylor Swift, SZA, Drake, and Beyonce on tour, you're not going to want to miss out. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad, and every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code McKenna for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code McKenna. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you so much again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. A lot of people are asking about periods and specifically what my first period story is. And I kind of don't remember. I don't think it was anything crazy, honestly. A lot of people were also asking about cramps. I had very, very bad cramps when I was younger, honestly, up until probably like this past year. And it would be so bad that I felt like I like couldn't move. Cramps are just the worst thing ever. <laughs> At one point I did talk to my doctor about how bad my cramps were and she prescribed me naproxen, which is just like a painkiller. So maybe ask your doctor if you have like pretty bad cramps. But I also found out that I have endometriosis. I'm gonna do my lip combo right now. This is the NYX retractable liner in nude pink. I love their retractable liners cause you don't have to sharpen them. Normally I use the shade natural, but I wanted to try something new. Okay, I just did the lip liner. But yeah, so last summer, one day I just randomly started feeling these like really intense abdominal pains. And I thought it was just bad period cramps at first, even though it kind of felt different, but I was just gonna kind of like wait it out, take some Tylenol. Also, I'm using the Sochi Beauty lipstick in the shade With Love, but then it just did not get any better because I was just gonna wait it out and it never went away. I ended up having to go to the hospital and I think I had some ovarian cysts. It was kind of a weird situation because even the doctors seemed a little bit confused. But then I started going to a gynecologist after that and she basically told me that I have endometriosis and a way to fix that is birth control. There's these things called placebo pills that are for like a week in the little birth control pack. And that's usually the time where there's like a hormone drop off and you would get your period. But getting my period is what is making the endometriosis worse. I kind of am not sure. I'm not a doctor. My gynecologist obviously explained it a million times better. So me repeating it is not the best. Also gonna emphasize the fact that I am talking about my body and my body only. Just telling like personal stories, not trying to like scare you guys or something. I don't know. But anyways, so my gynecologist has me skip the placebo pill. So that means I just do not get periods at all, which also means I don't get period cramps. And let me tell you, it has been great. Also, I just used the Fenty Gloss Bomb Heat in the shade Glass Slipper. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Their lip plumpers and lip glosses in general are so, so good. But yeah, that's my current situation on periods, I guess. Don't know why I told that whole story, but so many people were just like asking specifically about periods. So anyways, someone asked plans for next semester, question mark. I do not know. <laughs> I wish I did, but we shall see. And I will let you guys know when I know. There's also a lot of questions on confidence and how to not 
compare yourself to other people. Also, this is my setting spray routine. I do this one first. This is the Professionals Super Setter to really like lock my makeup in. But then I go on top of it with this one. This is the In The No Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen Setting Mist. I really love that it has sunscreen, but it also just doesn't really hold my makeup very well. So I like to throw it on over another setting spray because it also gives me this like glow that I really love and makes my makeup look a little bit more natural and less cakey. But anyways, honestly, that's a hard question to answer. But something that I always think about is like nobody is looking at you and like picking you apart because everybody is so worried about themselves. When I was in like a dance class in high school and we would take turns going up and doing the dance that we just learned, I would be like, oh my God, people are going to look at me. They're going to judge me. I need to be like a good dancer in front of these other people. And the whole time I was sitting there worrying about myself, not thinking about anybody else or judging anybody else. And that's truly, I feel like how everyone is. People aren't just like out to get you. I wish I could word this better. You are your own worst enemy and like your mind can play these tricks on you that are so mean when really like maybe someone's looking at you and they just have like an RBF or something, but really in their head, they're thinking like, oh my gosh, that person's outfit is so cute, but they were just like too scared to say it. Also on that note, compliment people more. Compliment random strangers. It is such a good feeling for both you and the other person. Yesterday, I was walking past this girl at school and she had such a cool outfit on and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna tell her. And so I was like, I love your outfit. And her face just like lit up and it made me so happy. So that's kind of what I mean. Like, I just think that you are truly your toughest critic and nobody is sitting there just thinking like, oh my gosh, her hair looks weird today or her outfit is weird. <laughs> you know, nobody's like thinking that. And if they are, then that is not someone that you want in your life. There was a question that I specifically wanted to answer. I think I found it. It's tips for having a boyfriend for the first time. This is something that I wanted to talk about because of my personal experience that I had in high school. Also, my makeup is now done. Here's how it turned out. I think it looks pretty good today. Now let's move on to my hair. I'm gonna use a heat protectant. So tips for having a boyfriend for the first time. I would say the first thing that comes to mind is do not ignore red flags. So I remember a specific situation where I was like a few months into dating someone and they lied to me about something and it was just a red flag. I was like, okay, so if you're willing to lie to me and go behind my back about this, what else will you do? And so I remember thinking like, oh, I'm too scared to like break up with him. I don't want to break up over this like small-ish thing. It's not that big of a deal, but it does make me like uncomfortable. And I'm not saying that you should just like break up with your partners over like the smallest little thing, like obviously have a conversation and talk about it. But this was a situation where my gut was kind of telling me like, you should break up with this person. But I was just too scared to, and I let it kind of just like be brushed off, I guess. And by ignoring that first red flag, I kind of set myself up to ignore several after that because I just kind of became codependent on this person, which is never a good thing. And then we ended up being together for a long time. And I feel like we just kind of developed this like attachment to each other that was so unhealthy. It was not a healthy relationship at all, but I like couldn't get out of it. I felt trapped, but also I was too scared to leave. And then I ended up getting cheated on like four times. <laughs> I truly do still like value everything I learned from that relationship. And I think that we were both just young and didn't know what we were doing. But yeah, just know your worth. If you've never had a partner before, it's easy to just maybe like brush off things where you're like, maybe that's just normal. And I'm not realizing that this is kind of like a red flag or something that like a person that I'm with shouldn't be doing, you know? When in reality, maybe it would be best to like end things with that person. The last thing I'm gonna say about that is also if you break up, don't stay in touch. Don't try to be friends. In my experience, that kind of just made the heartbreak process 10 times longer. When in reality, I do think I would have gotten over the person so much quicker if we just cut contact. It obviously depends on the situation, but if this person was truly not good for you, then why keep texting them? You know, it's so much easier said than done because you don't want to stop talking to this person that you've grown so close to and that knows so much about you. But at the end of the day, you will be so much better off if you cut out contact with this person that wasn't good for you. I used to never section my hair when I curled it. Now I do just because it's easier with layers to section it off. So the lower half of my hair is in the back right now while I curl the front. I want to talk about this question. It says, what's your favorite part of LA. I think there are just so many cool things here. It's a very interesting place. There's so much good food, so much good music, so many things to do, really good shopping. There's so much culture. I specifically wanted to talk about this question because it does kind of have to do with me moving and why I'm moving out of LA. I have just never felt like it's the place for me, which you probably know if you watched me when I first moved into my dorm. It's a very overwhelming place, especially as someone from a pretty small town that I had lived in my entire life. Honestly, there was not much change in my 
my life until moving and so moving out here to a completely different environment kind of just like really shook me up i knew that la was not where i wanted to be long term but i kind of hit a breaking point where i was like i don't know how much longer i can spend here a lot of it is for safety reasons just feeling so anxious and stressed whenever i go somewhere especially by myself i don't know like traffic parking is very difficult here <laughs> little things like that but also it is just not a very safe place to live especially as a 20 year old girl and so i want to make it clear i would never ever want to come across as one of those la influencers that's like oh my god la is so fake all the people here are fake like i hate la so much type thing like no <laughs> that is not how i feel at all it is simply just not the place for me and that is okay so that's kind of where i'm at right now with la i just want to experience living somewhere else for a bit and who knows i might end up coming back to la i truly have enjoyed a lot of my time here and i wouldn't change it because i feel like i grew up so much living here and i feel like a much stronger more capable person okay this is another question i wanted to talk about because i think it's important someone said any creepy experiences since you moved to your new apartment i'm wondering if they mean like paranormal creepy experiences nothing like that has happened but i do have a story not exactly related to my apartment but just like living in la in general that has more to do with like safety one time i was in little tokyo with a friend because we were looking for sunny angels also you guys i finally got the rabbit i was so excited when i found this but yeah so we were in little tokyo and we were about to walk to a different store and we were just walking around and we see this guy from kind of far away that looked a little bit strange he was like doing this weird like dance thing but he didn't look like he was like in his right mind necessarily and we were walking towards him and we had to like walk past him and without even communicating like me and the friend i was with knew like don't make eye contact walk right past him look confident look like you know where you're going shoulders back head up and so we did but it was like kind of a narrow area that we had to walk past him so there was like a wall right here we were right here he was right here so he kind of was like cornering us in as we walked past him like it became a very narrow space and we had to just like squeeze past him and it was really awkward because he was kind of like getting up in our face and like being very creepy then we noticed he started following us and so we were like okay what do we do and so i was like let's just walk into a store because he probably won't follow us in there and so we walk into a store he follows us in the store and the store was tiny it was a very narrow store and there were a lot of people in there and so we were trying to walk fast to get away from him but he was right behind us getting very close to us and just being very weird and and so we were kind of both just like panicking a little bit like what is he gonna do and so i go up to the cashier and i'm like hey this man is following us and immediately the person is like okay come behind the counter and so me and my friend go behind the counter we go into the back of the store and she's like okay just wait here until he leaves we'll let you know when we see him walk out and so that's what we did and after that we were kind of just like shaken up it was a weird experience and even though he left that didn't mean that he wasn't like outside waiting for us or something and so we would obviously rather be safe than sorry and so we asked a man working there to walk us to the car and he did so moral of the story be so aware of your surroundings and look confident and also don't be afraid to ask for help if we had not told the cashier what was going on i don't know what would have happened maybe nothing bad would have happened he kind of seems like he was like purposely trying to just freak us out not even like he was going to hurt us or anything he was almost just like messing with us but in a very mean scary way but yeah so ask for help tell someone what's happening don't be afraid to ask someone to walk you to your car i just wanted to share that story because i feel like it's important to be aware of your surroundings especially in LA on another note my hair is done so let's pick out an outfit looks like it's gonna be like 60 today so I'm thinking of maybe just leaving this top on and throwing on a denim jacket and some jeans we'll see how that looks you guys I am obsessed with this outfit I love when you have an idea in your head and it just works I also am wearing the new boots today they work perfectly with these jeans because these jeans are a little long on me but the boots have a heel they give me a little height the jeans are wide enough for the boots it just looks so cute also the denim on this jacket and the jeans match perfectly the jeans are from cotton on they're like the wide leg baggy jeans or something like that or maybe straight leg but the jacket is my dad's vintage denim jacket the brand is lee and then it has this like corduroy collar i just think this outfit is so cool i'm sorry i feel straight out of like daisy jones in the six right now i also am wearing this necklace from brandy that i think is so fun i've been loving more like bigger jewelry like this and colorful jewelry specifically and i thought this would look so cool with the gold on the belt and just like the accessories on the boots even though you can't even really see them the belt is also brandy top is brandy and so are the earrings so that's the outfit it also gets so hot in the classroom that i'm in so it'll be nice to be able to just like take this jacket off if i need to i hope the boots are comfortable throughout the day i guess we'll find out so i'm all ready to go to school thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today also thank you to seat geek for
for sponsoring. And I'm so excited that I was able to finally share something with you guys that I've been waiting to for months now about me moving and everything. There's so many times where I wanted to talk about it in a video, but just wasn't ready yet. Things weren't confirmed yet. So anyways, that's it for today. Comment a funny emoji if you made it till the end. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.